In this video, I'm going over how to set up the Samsung Galaxy A14. Welcome back to another video. I'm your tech guide, Wayne. In the video today, I want to walk you through some um, steps and things you should take when setting up your Samsung Galaxy A14. This phone does a lot, and there's some important tweaks you'll want to make when you first set it up so you can have the best experience. So I'm going to walk you through all those tweaks today. Um, if you find the video helpful, do me a favor, hit that thumbs up button. It definitely helps us out. And if you're not already a subscriber, hit that subscribe button so you can be alerted every time we post new videos. Also, you'll find a little shopping cart uh, on the side of the video right here where you'll find some of my favorite accessory recommendations for this phone. So definitely check those out. Those are things that will go great with this phone in case you don't already have them. All right, let's jump right in. So the first tip I want to show you that you'll want to set up is turning on your Wi-Fi. Now, to turn the Wi-Fi on and to connect to a Wi-Fi network, you're just going to swipe down from the top of the screen and the Wi-Fi icon will be the first one in the upper left corner. Now, when it's grayed out, it means your Wi-Fi is turned off. And when you um, just tap it once, it will turn blue and that'll tell you that your Wi-Fi is now on. And if you'd like to connect to a Wi-Fi network, you're simply going to take your finger and just put your finger on the button and keep it there for one second. That'll take us right to our settings menu. This will then show us all the available Wi-Fi networks that are around. You'll want to look for the network that is tied to your home or wherever you are. Um, let's say the name of your network is Netgear 52. You would then tap on Netgear 52 and the keyboard is going to pop up and allow you to then type in your Wi-Fi password. Once you have typed in the password, you're going to hit connect and then you'll be on the Wi-Fi network. Uh, the same would go for if you were at a Starbucks or a Denny's or at a friend's house, you simply ask what is the name of the Wi-Fi network. Uh, look for it, tap it, put in the password, and that's how you connect to Wi-Fi anywhere that you are. I'm already connected to this network here, so I'm good, but that's the process in the event you were not already connected. Now, for our next step, I want to show you how to keep your screen on longer. Um, right now, the phone is set where if I don't touch the screen every 15 seconds, it goes off automatically. So you can increase that. It's called the display timeout. We're going to swipe down from the top of the screen. In the upper right corner, look for this little settings wheel. Tap on that and swipe up to the display section and tap on display. From here, we're going to swipe up and go to screen timeout. Now I've changed it already, but your phone should either be set to 15 seconds or 30 out of the box. I always encourage change it to either two minutes or five minutes. That way your screen will stay on longer. You don't have to touch the screen every few seconds to keep it on. So that is our next tip. Now let's stay in the settings menu. I'm going to go back one step to the main screen. Now the next tip is, hey, I have this new phone. How do I transfer all of my data from my old phone? Um, there is a setting that's built in that will make this super easy for you. We're just going to swipe up accounts and backup option from here. Go all the way down to bring data from old device. You'll then tap allow, allow, and then you're going to tap receive data. Now, those are the steps you need to take for your phone. Now, on your old phone, and I'm just going to show you, I have a Motorola phone here. Let's say I'm trying to move the data from this phone to this phone. I would tap on the Play Store. I'm going to do a search in the Play Store by tapping on the Google Play box at the top here. And I'm going to type in Samsung Smart Switch or just tap the microphone. Samsung Smart Switch. It'll do a quick search for you. It'll bring up Samsung's proprietary app. Looks like this. Samsung Smart Switch. We're going to tap on the green install button. And then it should install pretty quickly. Now on my A14, I'm going to tap on Galaxy because I'm transferring from a Galaxy phone. So tap on there. I'm then going to tap on wireless. The phones are then going to connect themselves wirelessly to each other so that they're able to do the transfer. 
So we're almost done downloading on this side. After that, it's going to open the app and then I'll walk you through how to get your old phone ready to transfer data over to that new phone. Now some of you might be asking, what if my old phone doesn't work anymore? Then this method is not going to work. This method will only work if your old phone is still able to turn on and you're able to interact with the screen, just as an FYI. Let's open the app. We're gonna tap allow. Continue. It's gonna to ask to use our device location temporarily. We're gonna hit only this time. Allow. And you'll have to allow it to access all the files on your phone. You might even get an additional pop-up that asks you to go to the settings and also give permission. We're just gonna enable it here. Enable it here. And there we go. Now we're gonna tap, let's go. Okay, now one important thing to note is that your phone will need to be on at least 20% battery or more in order for this to work properly. And unfortunately this phone is only on 4%. So um, let me show you on this phone what you're gonna see. So on the other phone, it's gonna look very similar to this. Um, so let me just take a step back here just so I can show you. So you're gonna see this exact same screen pop up on this phone and on this phone you're gonna tap send data because you wanna send data from your old phone to the new phone, right? So you would tap send data, you would tap wireless, um, it's gonna disconnect from the Wi-Fi for a minute and then this is gonna send a code and basically both phones are going to communicate with each other and once they link up, you'll see on your new phone, it's gonna have all of the um, files from this phone. So contacts, videos, pictures. In some cases, it will take text messages. Sometimes it doesn't. Um, so you'll then be able to select what options you would like to have moved from the old phone to the new phone, and then it will start the transfer. So that is how you move all your data over from your old phone. You will need to let the phones sit for about 30 minutes uh, minimum so that the transfer can complete. And after that, most of your files will be moved over from that old phone to the new phone. Okay, next, let's talk about how to change your wallpaper. So if you want your picture on your home screen to look different, what you'll need to do is hold down on the screen, just find a blank spot. This will bring up a menu at the bottom of the screen. We're gonna tap on wallpaper and style. Now, you have a couple of options here. You can tap on browse my wallpapers. And from here, you'll see some of the featured wallpapers that come on the phone installed. You can go to your gallery and you can take a picture that you've already taken and you can make that your wallpaper. Let's say you've taken a picture of you and a family member and you want that to be your wallpaper. You would simply just tap on one of your folders here. I could tap on camera, for example, and I could make this picture my wallpaper just by tapping on that picture, hitting done, and then hitting preview and now this would become my new lock screen picture. So you can do that, that's an option that you have. Let's see, let's hit gallery to finish. Okay, oh, in the upper right corner you'll have a done button, so tap on done. And then just that easy, we've successfully changed our wallpaper. Now you have a few other options as well. So once you change the wallpaper, they will let you change your color palette. Now these have to do with how your menus are gonna show up. So as you notice, with this new palette, it makes all of my switches at the top of the screen brown, and my uh, dialer is gonna look different, and my you know calculator is gonna look different, right? So different palettes will change the color scheme of the phone. So Feel free to play around with this to really make your phone pop and make the colors align to what you like, okay? When you're done, hit apply, and that will save all your changes in making that new wallpaper. Now, if you don't wanna, um, if you wanna keep going, there's a few more wallpaper options here. There's this cool new section called graphical. These are more stock wallpapers from Samsung. You could choose one of these more solid color wallpaper options. Um, 
they have a wallpaper service where they will automatically change the wallpaper um, I think like once an hour or something like that so these are some cool other options you have or you can go to the Galaxy theme store and if you go into the theme store you can look for um, more wallpapers they have like thousands you can download some are free some are paid uh, let me just show you if I just tap on it real quickly here let's agree this is the theme store and right now there's some different um, tabs at the bottom here so there's themes there's wallpapers and there's icons in the wallpaper section you can go through and just browse all these cool wallpapers that are available Again, some are paid some are free now let me show you my secret on how to find great wallpapers and not have to pay any money if you go from feature to top and then go to the all button here and tap on free it will sort all the wallpapers based on only the ones that are free I always like to go through the free ones first and see if there's something I like and let's just say I like this one I can tap on it I'm gonna hit download now uh, the one catch is to download it you do need to sign up for a free Samsung account and all the Samsung account does is just save all of your data and your options it actually makes it easier for you to transfer your your files and everything when you get to a, a new phone so um, you can link it with your Google account for it to go quickly or you can link it with an email address so once you set up this Samsung account it will then let you download that wallpaper and then make that your new home screen picture all right Let's tap the home button here. Obviously our new uh, wallpaper is on, which is great. Now, next I'm gonna show you how to create new pages on your home screen. So right now, if I try to swipe left, I have one page to the right, but I'd like to make more pages. So just wanna show you if I hold down on this folder here, I can then drag it to the right and that brings it to this new page and if I keep bringing it to the right it'll make another page and another page so you essentially need to hold on an icon and then just drag to the right and that's how you create new pages on your home screen okay now you might find something on the home screen that you don't need or you don't use um, let's say for example Google TV maybe you don't care about this and you'd like to move that off of your home screen all you're gonna do is hold down on it with your finger for one second, and then you can tap on remove, and that will take it off of the home screen. Super easy. Now, you might also find some other things on your phone that you say, I don't think I'll ever use this. For example, I have this slot machine app on the phone. Maybe you say, um, how do I just uninstall that or delete it? I don't want that on the phone at all. No problem. You're gonna hold down it, Bring up that menu and then you're going to tap uninstall and this will remove it from the phone altogether press ok and now it's totally uninstalled and removed from the phone so that is how you create pages and also how you move apps and also how you uninstall them at the same time as well for the next tip i want to show you how to unlock some hidden features that are in the phone they're just really not in plain view so if you swipe down from the top of the screen and you swipe down again you have this whole section of what are called switches and they are just shortcuts to different options on the phone now if you swipe left you'll have another page of these little shortcuts but there are more that you don't even see that you actually have to press this plus to get to so let's press the plus and here you'll see there is a shortcut for NFC for those of you that use NFC a lot you may want to have that shortcut if so you simply hold down on it and then you drag it down and it will now show up in this menu here now aside from NFC this is the one I think is really important for a lot of you is the kids mode so if we hold down on the kids mode button and bring it down now we have this shortcut as well and I would also say bring this protect battery option as well hold down on it bring it down let it go we're gonna hit done so now whenever you swipe down from the top of your screen you're gonna see so you swipe once you see this swipe a second time you'll see more and then so this is what you'll see when you swipe two times and then when you swipe left 
you'll have all these extra shortcuts. Now, for those of you that are parents and your kids are always bugging you about using your phone, you'll want to have your kids mode set up because it'll give them something to play with without them interfering with what you have installed on the phone. So tap on the kids mode button and it'll show you how to use Samsung Kids. Hit the start button. It takes just a minute for it to download it to the phone. Once it's downloaded, then we can get it set up and it will create this whole section of kid-friendly apps and games. So just to show you really quickly here, allow, these are all the different apps that are available. All you'll need to do is just tap one time to download them, hit install. I'm not even sure if you guys can hear that. My little boy is actually waking up right now. So that's just so ironic that I'm going over the kids mode setting and he's waking up. So this video is going to wrap up real quick. All right. Um, but anyway, uh, I'm just downloading this one game as an example, but you can go in and download these other games. And the cool thing is there's a camera, there is a gallery. There's a lot of fun things for them to interact with and they won't, they will never be able to get to your um, social media apps or your pictures. They can't call anyone. It is locked just to this section. It's great for when you just need to pass your phone to your kids and get them to be calm while you're working on something else. All right. Now, when you try to get out of the section, watch this. If I hit the home button, it's not going to do anything. If I hit the back button, I can't get out of it. What I'm going to have to do is tap on the three buttons in the, in the upper right corner. And I have to then go to close Samsung Kids. Now, guess what? My fingerprint is already set up on the phone. So I'm going to have to put my fingerprint in in order for them, in order to be able to get out of this section. See that? Now, if your fingerprint is not set up on the phone, no problem. It will prompt you to enter a code, whatever it's going to have you set up a four digit code that you'll then use to get out of that section. So anyway, that's Samsung Kids and you know, I think that's going to save a lot of you guys in the future, you know, we need to pass your phone to your kids. Okay, the very last thing I wanted to show you in terms of the setup is how to program your fingerprint into the phone. So if you want to unlock the phone with your fingerprint. Now, mine is already set up, but I still want to show you where to go to get it done. Swipe down from the top of the screen, upper right corner, tap on the settings wheel here. We're going to then swipe up and we need to go to the security. Oh, sorry. We almost passed it. Security and privacy section. And then from here, we'll swipe up to biometrics. We'll tap on fingerprint. And what it's going to ask you to do is first set up a pin. So a four digit pin code, and then it will have you hold the phone and tap the fingerprint sensor to um, program your fingerprint in the phone. Now, by doing that, it will also set up a passcode for the phone as well. So if you wanna have a code so that no one can just pick up your phone and use it, this is a great thing to do because it's gonna put that pin code set up and it's gonna program your fingerprint, all right? So that's it, guys. This has been our video of just how to set up the phone and, and what I think are the most important things you'll wanna do uh, when you first get the phone. So if this was helpful, don't forget to hit that thumbs up button for me. I super appreciate that. If you're not already a subscriber, hit that subscribe button so you can be alerted every time we post new videos. And also leave a comment down below and let me know what um, tip in the video I showed that was your favorite. I always love to hear your feedback. And lastly, I just wanna show you a really cool case here. This is the React case from Otterbox. Um, it is an awesome case because it's it's basically tested by military standards and it has extra drop protection that's built in. So if you're someone who drops your phone a lot and you want a really strong case, but you also don't want something that's too ugly and bulky, I think this is the perfect mix of that because it's a clear case. It's one of the few clear cases I've seen that is, you know, basically is great for someone who drops their phone. So anyway, I'll have a link below in the description where you can get one of these. Um, thanks again for watching. Take care. And as always, have a good one.